Hey there, my name's Ray Del Vecchio, and I'm guessing you're here because you want to learn how to build a WordPress website from scratch. And not just a blog, but a professional level business website. Well, I'm going to show you exactly how you can do that today. And we're going to do this using a free WordPress theme. So this means that all you have to pay for are domain registration, which costs about $10 to $20 a year, and website hosting, which starts at under $10 a month. And just so you know, I like to use GoDaddy for domain registration, and I use HostGator for website hosting. And if you want to see how I set those up, I'm going to link to another video right here. But those are generally really easy to set up. And then once you get that, we're going to install WordPress. So what we're going to do today is fully customize a free WordPress theme so we end up with a modern, professional-looking business website. And our goal for today is to build a coffee shop website. So this is for a fake business. It's a made-up business, but I'm going to take this on as though it's a client. And we're going to create standard pages, you know, an about page, photo gallery, a contact page, etc. So in the end, we're going to create a unique website that you could potentially manage for a small business client. So without further ado, let's get started. Right now, I'm logged into cPanel on my HostGator website hosting account. And the way that I install WordPress easily is by using this quick install option down here in the software and services section. So let me click on quick install and we will get WordPress installed in no time here. There's the WordPress tab over here which I'm going to click on. And before they they didn't have these paid options on here, but now they're they're trying to upsell you with some of this stuff. We don't need to do any of this. We're just going to use the free install WordPress button, and we're going to do this directly on your on your domain most of the time. But for me, I'm doing this on a demonstration domain, so I'm going to install WordPress on a subdirectory, which is uh, d2demos.com/coffee. Let me put in my uh, email address, which is ray at websiteprofitcourse.com. My admin username, which I'm just going to do Raymond. And the blog title, I will do the business name that I chose, with it, which is Earth, Earth Grounds Coffee. And I'm not going to worry about filling in the first name or last name section. Actually, I'll just put Ray for my first name. I'm not going to fill in the last name right now. I'm just going to go ahead and install WordPress. And they want to upsell you with this. I'm just going to say no thanks. I'm a web designer. And right now, they're actually requiring you to put in the last name. The last time I did this, they did not require this. But let me just go ahead and do that. Del Vecchio. And then we're going to install WordPress. I'm still going to do the no thanks, I'm a web designer option. And we should have WordPress installed on here in no time. Oh, here we go. <laughs> they, they completely redesigned this, so this is kind of new to me. Um, the install is complete. We have this bar up here. And I'm just going to view my credentials. Let me go to the website, WordPress website administration page and log in. I'll just go ahead and copy my password. And here we go. And now I can save this website with LastPass, which I normally do. Uh, I like to just uh, type this in as WP Admin. And I'm also going to type in the full URL under the name just so I know that it's for this specific website. And there we go. So I saved it with LastPass, and we're good to go now with logging into WordPress. So we have WordPress installed, and with with an install, we're going to start with a free theme. So the theme that I've chosen to do this is Generate Press, and go to the Appearance Theme section to install this. Click the Add New button, and we can go to the right side of the page to search for it. So it's one word: Generate Press. And it should be the first one that pops up. You'll see if we click on it that we have 267 reviews. Most of them are five stars. And it's really a minimalistic theme, which for the most part, that's what I like to start with. 
And you know, every different theme has a custom set of theme options. So sometimes you're going to be limited with what you can customize with different themes. But hopefully by the end of this video, you're going to understand how you can customize any part of the website that you want through CSS and just through understanding the WordPress system. Because the more you understand that and how the themes and the plugins work, it becomes much easier to create websites quickly and manage several websites if you're creating them for yourself or for clients. So let me install and activate this theme. Go ahead and click the activate button and with this install let's take a look at our website. We should just have a blank website. And there we go. So you can see how basic this design is right now. and We're going to customize it so it looks really modern and professional. And the first step to customizing a WordPress website is creating a child theme. Now, I have a separate video that goes into detail about this process, but just to give you a brief overview, you want to create a child theme to your parent theme, and in our case, the parent theme is going to be GeneratePress. But you want to create a child theme because when the parent theme is updated, if you put all your customizations in that parent theme directory, you're going to lose the changes that you made. So we don't want that to happen. We want to protect against this scenario. And so we need to create a child theme for GeneratePress. And to show you an example of this, I'm going to go into my FTP program FileZilla. And I'm connected to the web server right now where WordPress is installed. And I'm going to go to the WP Content Themes folder. And this shows us all the themes that we have installed on our website. And you can see GeneratePress right up here at the top. Now on the left hand side, this is my computer. So this is a folder on my desktop computer and I have already created a child theme directory which it's named GeneratePress hyphen biz. And that's the format you want to use for a child theme. You want to use the name of the parent theme hyphen and then a name or a, a word. It could be child, it could be business, it could be the name of your client's business. So the name itself doesn't matter. You just want to make sure that you use that format, which is parent theme, hyphen, child theme name. And there's two files that are needed in every child theme directory, and that's style.css and functions.php, which right now these are blank, and I'm going to fill them in with the right code. I'll show you exactly where you can copy and paste that. So let me go back to my browser window here. And I'm going to open up a new tab, and on WordPress, there's this website, codex.wordpress.org slash child underscore themes. And this explains the process of creating a child theme. As I mentioned, I have a video going through this process, but I'm going to quickly just copy and paste the code necessary. So this is the code we need for style.css. So let me, let me open up this directory here. And open up style.css within the child theme directory and I'll bring that window over to here and I'm going to paste in this code so we want we want to update a few instances on this page here the most important line that we want to update is this template line because this is what defines our parent theme so our parent theme is not going to be 2015 it's going to be generate press so we need to make sure that we have that named correctly. The rest of these are not as important for filling out, but just to take you through them, we have our theme name, which is going to be Generate Press uh, Child, or in my case, I'm just going to do Generate Press Coffee Theme. Uh, the theme URI, it doesn't exist right now, so I'm just going to use my website, which is WebsiteProfitCourse.com. Uh, the description. I'm just going to do generate press child theme. I'll put my name as the author, Ray Del Vecchio. And the same thing for the author URI. I'm going to use my website, which let me just copy and paste it here. We can leave the version number the same. And we don't have to change the rest of this. The text domain, I am actually will change this to just uh, generate press child. So that's all we need for the style.css. We're going to save that file. And if we go back to our um, browser window here, we have the code that we need to copy and paste for the functions.php file right here.
So let me go ahead and do that and open up that file. And I'll paste that in and save it. And with these two files in place, we should be able to upload this child theme directory to our themes directory and activate that child theme. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to drag and drop this directory over to our web server. And if we go into the WordPress admin area, we can refresh this page and activate our child theme. As you can see, it's right here. Generate press coffee theme. We don't currently have a screenshot, but I'll, I'll show you how to update that once we're done the website. Let me just click on it and activate it right now to make sure everything goes smoothly with this. And there we go. The new theme's activated. And hopefully if I refresh the page, I still have all these styles that are associated with the parent theme. And there we go. So now, from here on out, when I customize the theme, I'm going to customize the child theme style.css file in order to make all of our design changes. And that way it won't be lost if we update Generate Press in the future. Okay, let's focus now on the design. Let's start with that. So the first thing that I'm going to do is pick a color scheme. And I actually have it picked out, but I'm going to show you a few places where you can choose a color scheme. And then we're going to do a quick logo in Photoshop. So first let's start with the color scheme. I'll show you what I picked out. And as you might imagine, because I'm doing a coffee company with the name Earth Grounds, I really wanted earthy type tones, particularly brown and green. So this is... I think a really nice color scheme that we're going to use and my vision of it is I want to use this dark brown on the right here as the header area the background color of the header area and also the nav bar and then I'm going to use these other colors just to accent the rest of the page and if I have any buttons or anything I'll probably use one of these two green colors so it accents the main brown color a little bit better and contrasts it so you could see on here the URL where you can generate color schemes is coolers it's like colors with an extra o dot co so let me go there really quickly that is uh, coolers dot co and it's actually a really nice generator I think they have an app but if you just click the start the generator button they just give you the full color palette and all you have to do is press the space bar and it'll generate new color palettes for you so you can kind of just browse and go along using this and then once you find one that you like you can export it to either a, an, an image file, a PDF or even uh, CSS or SCSS code or you can just copy the URL the old-fashioned way so this is a really cool color scheme generator and I have a few other examples of color scheme generators on my website so let me paste in the URL to the resources page on my website and if I click on the color scheme section you'll see I have a few listed here so let me let me pick these two the color combos and the color lovers because I think those are the two the uh, best sites that have full color palettes available so if I click on the combos button on colorcombos.com you'll see if you scroll down that's where you can start browsing the different palettes and Likewise, on the on this other site, colorlovers.com, they have not only color palettes, but they do have patterns available as well. So those are really my three favorite sites to, to get color schemes because I'm not a designer. So I don't like to spend a lot of time focusing on that. I just like to pick something that catches my eye. So let me go back to the website here and we'll get started. Now that I have the color scheme picked out, I'm going to create the logo really quickly and then we'll go ahead and cha start changing the colors in the header and set up the header area. Let me go over to Photoshop to do this logo really quickly. And I'll, I found a few logos that gave me inspiration for this. All I'm going to do is, is get a custom font and put the custom font within a box that's going to be offset a little bit and it kind of looks like a sign and that really is going to be our logo. And I'm going to use the color from the color scheme that we just picked. So let me get started with this. I'm going to create a new file and I want this file to be 340 pixels in width and 200 pixels in height. And that really isn't crucial. I just picked this arbitrarily based on the size. 
but this I think is a good size for the logo. And we're going to pick out the fonts using Google Fonts. So let me go back to the browser window and I'm going to go to google.com slash fonts. And they have over 700 fonts available to you that you can download to your computer and use within a program like Photoshop or you can also import it to your website and put these fonts on your website to get a completely custom design. So instead of going through and picking through 700 fonts, I already did this and I picked one out that I like and it's called Love Ya Like a Sister. So let me type that in and you'll see the look of the font here. Let me increase the size so you get a better view of it. So I'm just going to use the words Earth Grounds and I'm going to put this in a box that's one of those green colors on the color scheme that we chose. So if you want to use this you can add it to the collection along with other fonts and then you can either embed it or download it as a zip file and that's what I did. I already have this installed so let me go back here and bring up the type tool and I'm just going to type in earth. And you can see we're already in this font right now and instead of going to a new line I'm going to create a new layer because I, I want these uh, words to be a different size so there we go with earth grounds and now that I have these two I'm going to select them both and then select the entire area and center it make sure that we're centered there and I want the earth text to be the same width as the grounds so I'm going to increase the size of the earth text until it's about the same as grounds bring it down a little bit and there we go I mean you can see just using a custom font from Google fonts immediately makes a logo look that much better and we're what less than a minute into it so <laughs> let me uh, now create a new layer for the box and all I'm gonna do is actually just paint this entire area with a color so the color that I'm gonna choose for this box is uh, this green here the uh, the hex code AAC0AA and I believe I already have that selected as well in Photoshop yeah AAC0AA -A. so I'm gonna get the uh, brush tool and just paint over this layer and I just gotta bring it to the back now so we get the uh, font back and I'm going to decrease the size of this box a little bit because like I mentioned before I want to give it just a slight tilt so it's not completely square just a little you know a little flair to it I don't really know design wise why but <laughs> I just feel like it looks better I saw a couple logos that look a little better with that so I'm gonna offset this hit control T or command T to do the uh, tr uh, transform tool and I'm gonna offset this by just a couple degrees so let me do uh, about two degrees right there Let's offset it by two degrees and I'm also gonna do a really really quick pattern overlay to give this just a little bit more depth so I'm gonna click into this green background layer and let me bring the box into this window here and I'm gonna do a pattern overlay and I already have these settings in place as well I went through this really quickly right before I recorded and all that I have is a vertical stripe pattern with blend mode color burn and the opacity is about 10%. So you see if I do too much opacity, it really starts to look bad. But if I, I just want a subtle, a subtle pattern to it. So we're going to do about 10% on that color burn. And the scale for this vertical line, I believe it's a standard pattern within Photoshop. The scale that I have is about 150. So this is our logo. This is all I'm going to do for the logo. We just put it together in a matter of minutes. All I'm going to do is hide this white background so I get the transparency and I'm going to save this as a PNG file so I like to do uh, control shift alt s or command shift alt s on the Mac which brings up the save for web and devices tool and you can choose either, either JPEG or ping you can't do transparency with a JPEG so we want a PNG file and I'm just going to save this uh, right to this folder and I'm just going to call it Earth Grounds logo. 
earth-grounds-logo. I normally don't like to put spaces in any of my files on a website. I like to use hyphens or underscores instead. So there we go, our logo is done. So we could start with editing the WordPress header. So let's go back to the WordPress admin page to start with this. And we're going to go into the customize section. So just so you know, I've never used this theme before. This is actually the first time I'm using this theme. So this is, uh, I may have mentioned this before in the video, but every theme has a different set of theme options. And this is the, these are the theme options specific to this Generate Press theme. So if you use a different theme, you might have different theme options. You might not be able to implement this the same way. And that's why I like using premium themes because I use the same theme for every website. Whereas with the free themes, a lot of times you have to pick a theme that fits the design you want to do. But with that said, let me go through these options on the custom page, on the customize page, and we'll see what we can customize right here. So I'm really looking specifically for the header area, but I'm going to go through all these. So this set the front page option. That can actually be set elsewhere. I'm not going to worry about that right this minute. Uh, the site identity. Here we go with the logo. Let me see if I can upload my logo. So here we go with the Earth Grounds logo. I'm going to upload it. We'll choose this image. And let me see how it looks on here. Okay, so we have the logo uploaded now. And what I want to do is hide the site title and the tagline. All right, and I'm going to save this and publish. We'll go back and check out the other options available to us. So these are the layout options. Here we go. Container width. So I could change the width of the page. I'm not going to worry about that. I think it looks fine. We could do the header layout, fluid, full width. Uh, that's exactly what I want. Header alignment. I want the header alignment center. And I want the same thing with the navigation. I want the navigation buttons to be center but I also want them fluid or full width. If you take a look at contain, you'll see that it just cuts it off at the width of the page, but I, I really want a full width because I want this entire header area to be brown. Both the background and the nav background are gonna be brown, so it kinda looks like one consistent header. And then we got navigational alignment center, nav search disabled, which is right, I don't want that content layout sidebar layout I'm not gonna worry about any of these other options here I'm, I'm good with all this so I'm gonna save and publish those changes that I just made we'll go back again and we'll edit the colors so this is where we could start with the colors and right here it looks like you can update the background color but that is specifically for the content area I want to update the the background color of the header area so let me go back to the default on that it looks like I can't do that through this customized section so we're gonna to have to do that through CSS so you're gonna see how to do that with CSS and uh, same thing with the typography here let's see what they give you I, I, I bet you they use Google fonts for this I don't know that specifically but I'd imagine they're using Google fonts to do these uh, typography options so I can change I can change the font on the entire page um, I'm not even gonna save that so let me exit out of this customizer and I think it should have the previous font let me refresh the page over here and take a look and there we go yeah we have the old font but now we have it centered and we have the logo updated so what we're gonna do is we're gonna update the background on the nav bar and the background of this section with CSS and if you don't know CSS I hope you learn something here because frankly it's not that difficult um, specifically if you know how to search for what you're looking for and that, that's really the biggest problem if you don't know the properties of CSS then you're not gonna know what to search for but the reality is when I started learning CSS I didn't memorize anything I just knew what to search for and that's how I found out how to implement things so the easiest way to figure that out is using the Chrome inspector I'm using Google Chrome as my browser and if you right click and hit inspect on a particular area of the page it'll show you the code behind that page 
So let me pull in this in inspector into this window. And right now it's a separate window, but I can make this docked within the same window. So I'm going to dock it to the bottom here so we can see. And you'll notice if I hover over this part of the HTML code, it shows me where that is on the page. And you can see this is the header HTML code. So in order to change the background of this, all I have to do is I'll show you the CSS necessary. And we can test CSS with this Chrome inspector. It doesn't get saved, but we can test it. So really what I want to do is add a line of CSS to this header, which changes the background. So for CSS, it's just simply background, colon, and then the color we want to use. So the hex code we're going to use is that dark brown that I mentioned, which is hex code 56331E. So let me copy and paste that. And it looks like I gotta retype the background here. That didn't get saved. I'm gonna paste in this hex code. And there we go. We have our new background color. So like I said, this doesn't get saved with the Chrome inspector. I have to copy this CSS statement and I'm gonna add it to the child theme that we just created. So we're gonna go back into the WordPress admin area to the editor section and you'll see that we have the style.css selected for our generate press coffee theme. So all I'm going to do is copy and paste that exact style. But here's the deal. We need to, he we need to target the header. That's the HTML code that we're targeting for the CSS statement. So we target the header and we put the CSS statement within the brackets. And that's all we need. Once we update this file and refresh the page, we should see that we have our new brown background. And it looks like something got messed up here, so I'm not worried about it. I'm just going to figure out why and fix it. Let me right-click here, and this got turned that color brown. So let me see here. And it looks like this is why. We have another area of code that's wrapped in this header tag. Now, why didn't this get turned into brown? Let's go back up here, right-click, and inspect it. And we can see that... If we go over to the right side of the page, you can see that the there's another CSS statement for this dot site header, which the dot means class. So we look for the class under this header section. We see class equals site header. So that's how you define a, uh, an HTML class within CSS with the dot. And they have this background color set to FFF. So this is higher level priority than our color which you can see is right here so I have to do a couple things number one I want to remove this header statement because I'm not targeting the header HTML because that appears somewhere else I'm actually going to target this dot site header so if I go ahead and make this change I believe that we should be okay so let me do that and I go back in here and instead of targeting the header we're targeting the site header class so let me update that and refresh the page and let's see what we got. And there we go. We have that working now. So the next step is to make this navbar the same color. So if I right click that, you'll see that we have uh, this nav section here. And if I look at the CSS, the background color is defined using this uh, main navigation class. Again, the main navigation class is right over here. And so I'm really just going to copy this entire statement because I'm going to override this in my child theme style.css. And we're going to do the same exact color. And let me show you something uh, cool with this. Because we're defining the same color with these two statements, we can combine them. And that's exactly what they did here. The comma separates the, the elements that you're targeting. So I'm going to copy and paste this or actually just the hex code color to this background color statement. So I'm going to remove this first statement with the background color and I'm just going to put a comma in here. And you'll see we have the main navigation class comma and then we're targeting also the main navigation class with the lists under that class. So basically this background color CSS statement is going to target all three of these HTML elements. So with that in place, I'm going to update the file. And the navigation bar should be changed from black to brown. And there we go. So you can see how we did that. We have this top header area now that 
kind of all flows together. And now I want to create all the pages. I'm just going to create every page at once and then we'll build them separately. So let me go back into the WordPress admin area and I'm just going to create a bunch of pages right now. So they start off with one sample page, but I'm going to go through and create all the pages that I need. Just hit the add new button and I'm just going to start with the home page and let me publish that and we're going to add a few more pages here. We're going to do an about page. We're going to do a menu page. We're going to do an events page which with WordPress you can do an event calendar however I'm just gonna do a simple events page where you manually you know type out the events we have a gallery and the last one we're gonna do is just a contact page so with all these pages uh, created now I wanna see the menu I'm not sure if this menu auto updates so let me go ahead and reload and see if we have these new pages on the menu yeah it looks like we're good to go there so let me go back into the pages I'm going to delete that sample page because we don't need that and you just hit that into the trash and that's going to bring up the new trash menu over here so if you do want to ever restore something you go that you put in the trash you could just go right over here and either restore it or delete it permanently that's just a quick tip and now what I want to do is set the front page to the home page because right now the home page just displays our blog posts and I'm also gonna link the blog to this events page so let me let me do those two things we're gonna do that from the settings reading menu and right here you'll see that the front page displays your latest post but I'm gonna change it to a static page so the front page is gonna be the home page that we just created under the pages section and the post page is gonna be the events page so basically we're gonna instead of using a blog we're gonna each blog post is gonna be an individual event that's the way we could set this up and you could set this up however you want if you just want to keep it as a page and not do a blog at all you could do it that way or if you want a separate blog you cr would create another page called blog under the pages section and set it right here so that's up to you but we're just gonna save the page right now or save those settings and if we go back you should see instead of seeing this blog post we'll see the blank home page so let me reload it and there we go the other thing I just I want to check I think we're good to go with this but WordPress by default has a setting called your permalink settings and that's just how the URLs are displayed and for SEO purposes it's good to set this to just post name only so I like to keep it the post name only just so you don't have these extra unnecessary characters in the URL like the UR, or like the year and the month and the day it just makes the URL a lot longer and I like a cleaner URL so I always change my permalinks to this post name so I'll save that and with that updated now we can really get into building out some of the pages before I edit the content area, which is the left-hand side of the page here, I'm going to edit the sidebar first because the sidebar is going to appear on every one of these pages. And what I have in mind for the sidebar is two main sections. I'm going to list the social media icons for this particular business, and I'm also going to put the hours on the sidebar. So I'm going to remove most of what's on the sidebar right now. And the first step in this process since I'm doing the social media icons first I'm gonna upload the images for those icons so I'm gonna go back into the WordPress admin area into the media section which is where I can upload these and you'll see the only one we have uploaded right now is the logo that we created previously but right now I'm gonna go into a folder that I have here and upload all these icons and you'll see I also have a clock icon which I'm going to use for the hour section so let me select all of them and I'm gonna upload them all at once and the way we're gonna implement this social these social icons on the sidebar is through HTML so you'll see a quick practical example of how easy HTML can be 
if you want to get a custom look. I'm going to I'm going to copy all the URLs. Let me open up Notepad here. And I'm going to copy all the URLs for these photos, which if I click on the photo after it's uploaded, I can find the URL over here on the right. Let me paste all these into Notepad. And I'm going to go through here, take a take about a minute to do this. And here we go. I have all the URLs copied for the images that I just uploaded. So with that completed, I'm going to go into the Appearance Widget section, which is where the sidebar widgets are controlled. And you can see these are all the ones that are on the page currently. We have Search, Recent Posts, Comments, Archives, Categories, and the Meta section. And if we go back to the page, you'll see that exact order. The Search, Posts, Comments, Archives, Categories, and the Meta section. So like I said, I'm going to remove all of these and I'm going to put two new ones in for the social media icons and the hours. So let me just delete all these. I have to expand them and I'm just going to delete them. So I'm going to go through and do all of these and then I'm going to add in custom HTML to do the social icons and the same thing for the hour section so we get the exact look that we want. So you can add HTML by dragging and dropping this text widget over here. And we can add a title if we want. I'm just going to add uh, find us on social. And you can change this to whatever you like. And for the content, we can type in HTML here. So the way that we're going to do this with HTML is through a few different HTML tags. We're going to use the div tag to act as a container for our social media icons. And when I write out HTML, I normally like to write out the blank code and then fill it in. So for this instance, I want to do the, the opening tag and the closing tag. And then I will type the rest of the code in the middle here. So what I want to do is have a list of image links for the social icons. So the link tag in HTML is A. That stands for the anchor tag. And we type the URL into this href section. And for right now, I'm just going to put a hashtag in there as a placeholder. Again, I'm going to type the blank code, so I'm going to end the anchor tag. And then we're, instead of using text to link, we're going to use the, image, the images. So I'm going to type in the image tag here, which is IMG. And instead of href, we use src to indicate where the file is, the image file that we're linking to. And it's also required, it's good practice to put in the alt tag for images, which this is really just a description of the image. So it's good for SEO purposes if you fill this in with a quick one-line description of what the image is. And then to end an image tag, you don't actually close it out with the side carrots. You just simply use the slash and then end it like that. So this is the format that we're going to use, and we have four social icons. So all I'm going to do is copy and paste this four different times. And I want to see if I could just do this on a new line so it's a little bit more organized as well. Oh, I didn't mean to backspace that. And like I said, I'm just going to copy and paste this. So there's four instances of this code. So now that I have this you know, skeleton code completed, I'm going to take the URLs that I just copied and put them in there under the SRC. So we'll link them like that. Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, and the last one that we're going to do here is Facebook. And then we also have this clock image, which we're going to use when we do the hour section. So now we have all of them in place. And like I said, you, you normally want to fill out the alt tag. For now, I'm going to leave it blank just to save some time here. And we can save this and test it out. So let's save this widget and see where we are and see what updates we have to make. So I'll refresh the page. And you can see these icons are huge. So we want to make them smaller, and we want to have them in one line here. So the first thing I want to do is actually see what size 
this width is for this box because that's what's going to determine. I'm going to use a little math to use the full width of this box and divide it by four accounting for any padding in between the icons. So if I right click this, inspect the element and hover over this code here, you'll see that right now the images are 128 by 128 in pixel width and the entire area on the sidebar here is 195 pixels. So let me quickly write that down here. Sidebar is 195 pixels. So what I'm going to do, let me just pull up a calculator. And I'm going to say I want, you know, f I'm going to just start with five pixels of padding in between each. So that means I'm going to need 20 pixels of padding total. So let me do 195 minus 20 to account for that padding. And then I'm going to divide that by 4. And that's going to give me the width for each icon. So I'm going to round down. I'm just going to do 43 pixels per icon. So the icon, I'm going to scale down from 128 by 128 to 43 by 43 pixels. So let me write that down. And we can start to edit this. So I'm going to go back to the WordPress admin area. And I'm going to do one thing. Um, instead of just leaving this as a blank div HTML element, I want to add a class to it. That way I can target it with the CSS. So I'm going to call this uh, sidebar-social-icons. And that's going to be my class name. And now when I go to edit the CSS, I'll be able to target this specific uh, container. So let me save that. I copied the class name and it looks like it was saved so let me go into the appearance editor section which is going to bring up our styled at CSS and this is where we can add the customizations. So in order to target the class that I just named like I said before you use the dot symbol and then you type in the class name. I'm just pasting it in and we want to, in order to get these icons to show up on one line, we want to add a CSS property called float left. And I'm going to add this to the entire div, but also to the anchor element and also the image element. So in order to do that, I use the comma to separate them. And with this one, I'm going to target the anchor element within this div and then the IMG element within the div. And I want all of these to f float left. So I'm going to put the curly brackets to apply it to all three of them. And we'll just type it in, float left. And like I said, we want to make the images um, 43 by 43. So let me type that CSS in as well. So we're going to target the uh, that div and the IMG within the div. And we're going to set the width and the height to 43 pixels. OK, and let's save this, take a look really quickly. Um, I did forget the padding, so we're going to have to add the padding in. But a quick refresh, and we'll see how that looks. And there we go. You can see they're all on one line, and they're correctly sized now. So I just got to add the padding in. And I'm going to add the padding to the anchor element, because that's actually the parent element to the IMG. So it's, a, it's usually better to add the padding to the topmost element. So that's how I'm going to do it. Let me, instead of typing it out, let me copy and paste this. Put in the curly brackets and just type in padding right 5 pixels. So let's update that and take a look. And we should have our social media icons looking correct. And there we go. So we're done with that part of it. Now we just need to add on the uh, hours of the store. I'm going to go back into the WordPress admin area to add this widget to the sidebar. So we'll go to the appearance widget section. And we'll add another text widget where we can update it with HTML. And for this one, I'm just going to call it store hours. And we're going to do something a little bit simpler this time. Right here, you can see a checkbox, automatically add paragraphs, and this will automatically wrap 
each paragraph separated by a couple spaces here into the HTML paragraph tag. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to use the image that we uploaded before. And let me just type out the skeleton code here. We have the SRC, the alt, and we're also going to name a class for this one. And then we finish it off with the slash and side caret. And then as I press two enters here and go to a new line, that is what's going to automatically add the paragraph text. Or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the paragraph HTML tags. So I don't need to manually do that. So instead, I'm just going to type out the hours here. We'll do Monday, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. And I want this to be bold, so the HTML tag for that is the strong tag. So I'll surround that with the correct HTML, and then I'm going to copy and paste this for every day of the week. And fill in the right days. And I'm going to do the same time for Monday through Friday, and then for Saturday and Sunday I'll change the time. Just to do a slight variation. Obviously, I'm completely making this up, but uh, all right. So now that we get that complete, let me paste in the URL for the clock image that we we were going to use that we uploaded before. All right, and then again for the alt tag. Uh, I'll just type in clock. I mean, it's not really that big of a deal right now. For the class, I'm going to put just clock image, clock IMG. And that way we'll be able to tar target the image. But for right now, let me save it and we'll see how this looks. Refresh the page over here. And there we go. So there's a couple things that we can do here. Um, number one, I'm going to make this icon the same size as, as this. Maybe a little bit bigger. I might end up making it 50 pixels. We'll take a look at that. And I could also make this smaller, but for the time being, I'm okay with this. You know, the Wednesday flows into another line, so I could potentially abbreviate that, but I, I don't care that much about that. So let's go back into here and change the size of this image. So we're just going to copy the class name and go back to appearance editor and right under here let me paste in that image or that class name I'm sorry for the image and I could put in the new width so let me do width 50 pixels and height 50 pixels so let's take a look at that And that's a better size. And I think it would look good if it was centered. So an easy way to center an image is use the display block feature or property. And then you use margin uh, zero auto, which this is the top and the right margin. And it repeats for the bottom and the left. So the top and the bottom are zero. And the right and the left margin are auto generated, which centers it. So this should center the clock image. Let's reload the page, and there we go. So I think that looks pretty good. And that's really it for the sidebar. I have to make one small update. I see that the there is no padding under the social icons. So the content area on the sidebar here is white, but the background here is a light gray. And so I just got to slightly update the padding there. And I know why it's doing it. It's doing it because of the float setting that we applied with CSS. So let me quickly fix that. This can actually be fixed by applying a CSS statement to the parent container, which is this entire white area here. So if I bring up the Chrome inspector and hover over this, let me find that. And that's right here, the aside. So there's HTML aside. And what we want to do is apply the overflow auto and that should fix this and that, this is just a weird thing with CSS when you float elements the parent container doesn't really calculate their height basically the height is almost zero 
it's just a weird little thing there. So we have to add this overflow auto to this. And the way that I'm going to do that is I see the ID is text dash two, and it's within this class inside right sidebar. So I'm going to target those two elements. And if I go back here, I can do that by um, targeting this class that I just copied inside right sidebar. And the ID is targeted with this hashtag. So you do ID text to. And if we apply the overflow auto CSS property to this, then we should fix the problem. So let's update that file and refresh it. And there we go. We're good to go with the sidebar. So we can start working on the pages now. And the first one that I'm going to deal with is the home page. So for the home page, what I want is just a slideshow. And we'll have text under that, but I want to put a, a wide slideshow on the home page that isn't going to be on any of the other inner pages. So we'll start with that. And I have photos completed over here that these are all free stock photos. And I'll show you where I got them. I got them from this site, unsplash.com. And they give you 10 new photos every 10 days. And some of these photos are amazing. So, like, this is really something that's only come around in the last couple of years where you can get really high quality stock photos for free. And if you need specific photos, you're not going to find them. But there's a lot of just generic type photos that are incredibly high quality and probably higher quality than you could take, <laughs> which is the nice thing. You know, you, you have all these resources available to you to create beautiful websites nowadays. So I went through and I looked at all the different coffee photos that I could find from these. And let me bring up the ones that I chose here. And I'll show you just just a, a few of them that I'm going to add to the website. So we have an outdoor photo here. We have a picture of beans. There's a cup of coffee with uh, cookies. There's a latte alongside of a stack of receipts and with a uh, service bell. There's a picture of the inside of a coffee bar. Here's a picture of someone with mittens and a coffee cup. Uh, an espresso machine, another latte, macaroons, and here's a picture of just a guy working at the computer with a cup of coffee. So those are the ones that we're going to add. And I think I'm going to add all 10 of these to the photo gallery page, and I'm going to pick five of them to use for the home page slider. And I might add the photos in random places throughout the other pages for design purposes, but we'll see how that goes. So let's get started with this. And I'm going to come back to the WordPress admin area. And I'm going to try something new. Um, I normally use uh, either manual coding or a different plugin to do the slider feature. But I just found another one that has 600,000 active installs. And it's got a 4.8 out of 5 star rating. So I'm going to use this one. Never used it before, so we'll see if you know how easy it is. But since the ratings are so high, I don't think it's going to be an issue using a new plugin. So let's go over to the plugin section here. And I'm going to add new. And this plugin is called Meta Slider. Like I said, I just came across this today. And as you can see, it's got 600,000 plus active installs and there's 313 reviews. So I would imagine that this is pretty easy to use and does a nice job of placing uh, image slideshows within your website. So let's install and activate it and take a look at the settings available to us. And you can see it adds a little sidebar here, the meta slider sidebar. And this page is, wow, this is, this is definitely simple. There's nothing on this page except the plus button. So we're going to create our first slideshow. And we're going to add the five photos from those 10 stock photos that I just showed you. So let's upload those files. I'm going to I'm going to choose them. For the homepage slider, I'll do the shop photo. That'll be my first uh, photo. And for right now, I'm not going to fill in this alt text information. But like I said before, if you want to do this for SEO purposes, you just want a general description of what the photo is. So for something like this, you might say coffee shop in and then your city or state name and that'll help you get recognized if people are searching 
But for right now, I'm going to leave all these blank. And I'm just going to add these photos to the slider. So let me add a few more. I'll do uh, the macaroons since they're pretty bright. We would imagine that this uh, coffee shop has a bakery. And then we're going to do a picture of the beans. We'll do a picture of a cup of coffee. So let's see which one we want to select here. Um, I'll do the latte. So we'll add that and then one more. Let's see here which one. I'll add this cup of coffee with the cookie because who doesn't love cookies? So there we go. And it looks like we can add a caption or URL to each of these if we want to link them up to other pages. But for right now, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to leave these as images without any links or captions. And we'll see how it looks. So on the right side here, they give you a few different options. And these are for different uh, code bases to do the slider. And I think this is jQuery for the most part. But I believe I've used this Nivo slider before. But for right now, I'm just going to go with the, the default flex slider and see how it looks. And for size, I would imagine it's going to auto resize. But let me see how wide this area is here. So if I inspect the element, I can see that the width of this area is 725. So that's the width I'm going to make the slider. I can adjust the height based on the photos that I have. Right now I don't know what it is. I think it's a little bit bigger than this. So I'm going to go 400 and we'll see if I need to adjust that after. Um, I'm just going to stick with the fade effect, use the default theme, include the arrows, and navigation dots are hidden. I don't really know what that means at the moment. So let's, um, let's figure that out once we save it here. And so I'm going to go and save all of these. Save the settings, and at the bottom here, they give you a short code. So with that short code, we can copy and paste this into the WordPress homepage, and that'll display this gallery. And that's how easy plugins are for the most part. I mean, plugins are, you can generally learn them in five to 10 minutes if, uh, if you're comfortable with WordPress. So let me go into the home page here, and I'm just going to paste in the short code, save it, and we'll take a look. And you could do this either in the visual tab or the text tab. The text tab is going to show you the HTML code. The visual tab is more like Microsoft Word. But we're going to paste in the short code, update the page, and let's take a look to see how our gallery looks on this page. And there we go. I see the bullets at the bottom. We have the arrows on the sides. And for the most part, I think this looks good. So the the one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to change the name of this page from Home to Earth Grounds Coffee Shop. So I think that will look a little better. And it's still going to be linked to the home page. We don't have to worry about that. So let's update that. Take a quick look here. Yeah, that looks good. So. The other thing I want to change here is this button. I don't want this to be labeled Earth Grounds. I want this to be just Home. So I'm, I need to go to the Menus section within WordPress. And that is over here in Appearance Menus. And it looks like right now there isn't any menu created. So, And you could also manage this within the Customizer, within Appearance Customize section. But right now, let me create this menu. I'm just going to call it Main Navigation or main nav and we have this on here twice the home page so I'm gonna remove this instance of it I'm gonna label this home and these other pages let me see the order I have here about menu events gallery contact so we have about menu and we can drag and drop this events gallery and contact and if you want to do a sub-menu, you just uh, drag and drop it inward, and you could do a sub-item that way. But we don't want to do that. These are all top-level items. So let me create this menu. I have the main nav menu. And it just added this ma manage locations instance. 
So I think I could do this within Customizer. Let me go into the Customizer and take a look at this. If I go into Customize, I can go to this Menu section here. And uh, Menu Locations, your theme supports one menu. Select which menu you would like to use. So I'm going to select the Main Nav, Save and Publish. And I think that will fix everything. So it's saved. Let me exit out of the Customizer and refresh this page and see what it looks like. And there we go, it's fixed. So now we have home here. We have the title as Earthgrounds Coffee Shop on the actual home page. We have the gallery working. And all we really need to do is build the inner pages. So I'm going to start building most of these inner pages, which for the most part is just going to be simple text and headlines. And for the gallery page, I'm going to do thumbnails that expand when you click on them into the full size photo. And then we're going to fill in these widget areas with some content. And, the, and finally, we're just going to uh, edit the footer and check for responsiveness across the entire website to make sure that it looks good on mobile. So let's go to the next step here, which is building out the inner pages. And I'm not going to write out text for this. Let me just use fake text, which an easy uh, way to do that is search for lorem ipsum. And it's just a Latin text generator, but it's generally what people use if they need filler text. At least graphic designers and, and website developers. So you could just generate this fake text, copy and paste it, and use that as the text on your website to fill the space so you get an understanding of what it's going to look like when you do write it out. So let me go back to the pages here and just I'm going to paste a couple of paragraphs here on the visual tab. Let me copy and paste that and break it into a few paragraphs. And then we'll save this. And I'm going to do the same thing on the inner pages, but I'm going to add just different photos on those pages and float them to the left or to the right. So we can just get a lot of the different variations of how the layouts will look. So with that saved, let's refresh the page. Now we got some text in there. And we'll start now with the About page. We'll go into the About page and do the same thing. I'm going to copy a little bit more text for the About page. And I'm going, to add, I'm going to add a photo in there at the top. So let me paste in this content. And you'll see it automatically pastes in those paragraphs. I'm going to break it into, again, a few more paragraphs here. And once we do that, I'll show you how to add a quick photo. So I'm going to put my cursor and put it right at the front before any content on this page. And I'm going to click it there, and I'm going to click the Add Media button. And I want to put in one of these photos. So I'll use a photo with a latte. But instead of having it full size across the top of the screen like the slideshow, I'm going to put the medium size photo in there which when you upload to WordPress it automatically would, will generate a medium and a thumbnail size photo so we're gonna put the medium size photo in there I don't want it to link to anything and I'm going to align this to the right side of the page so I can either align it left or right I'm gonna do right for now and see how that looks and you'll see within the visual tab it gives you an idea of how that is going to look but let's update it and refresh over here to get the actual look and there we go. So we have the about page done. And let me do a couple headlines on this page as well. Do a couple headlines. For this, I'm just going to do the owners. And then oh, down here, I'll do our story. And I'm just going to make these headlines. So within WordPress, you don't see it right now, but over on the right side, there's a button, the toolbar toggle. That'll bring up a second row. And we can edit from standard paragraph text to heading text. So I'm going to do heading 2 for this one. And I'll do heading 1 for this one. I'm sorry, not heading 1, heading 3. So you can see how those two headings look. And it's just a standard way to break up the content. So we'll refresh the page and get a look at that. And right now it doesn't stand out that much, but you can always edit this and customize it with CSS. For right now, I'm going to leave it as is. So we're going to go to the next page, the menu page. So we're going to keep this simple as well. We're just going to do two sections, the uh, 
beverage section and the bakery section. So let me go over here to the about page. I'm sorry, not the about page, the menu page. And we'll do that. So we'll do beverages. I'm just going to put in some fake text right now to to build like the skeleton of the page. I tend to do that with everything, whether it's code or, <laughs> or building out a page. Bakery. And then I want to make these headings. And I'm going to make them bold as well. So let me bold it first. And then I'm going to make this heading 2, we'll say. Make both of them heading 2. And for this, I'm going to do a list. So let me see what the what the list looks like, a bolded list. Let me do this. I'll capitalize it like that. And I'll put the price in there. All right, we're finished with the beverages now. And I'll do the same thing with the bakery. I'm going to keep that shorter and just do two or three items here. So let me again select that, select the bolded list. And I'll keep this short. All right, so that's all I'm going to do for the menu right now. We're going to keep this really simple. We'll refresh, and there we go. So I think that looks pretty darn good right now. So we're going to move on to the events page. And really, I'm not going to do anything with the events page. The events page right now is linked to the blog. So anytime you have a new event, you can just edit that with the blog. So let me add a quick blog post, and I'll show you that. So I'll just say, you know, free concert on February 14th. So we'll do that. And we're going to type or paste in the lorem ipsum text because I don't feel like writing this out right now. And just keep it simple. So let's go over here and we should see we have two blog posts now. And the one thing we can do is add the more tag so we don't display the full blog post on this page. So let me see if this works with the theme. All you do is after, normally after the first paragraph or so, I'll break this apart into a couple paragraphs. And we'll say after the second paragraph, I'm going to put in this more tag, which it's this uh, button here right to the left of the toolbar toggle and with this tag in there it should just display the snippet and it should have a link to the full blog post so let me update that and see how it looks see if it works with this theme and yeah we have that working correctly so you see it only displays the snippet and we have the link to the full post here so right now we have the home page done we have the about page done we have the menu page done, the events page done, which is linked to the blog. I'm going to quickly do the contact, and we'll save the gallery for last. For the contact page, all I'm going to do is add in a fake address and embed the Google Map. So let me go into the contact page over here in the WordPress admin. And I have a fake address that I created over here. So let me paste that in. And I'll type out the name here. Again, this is not a real address. I completely made this up. I'm going to paste in a fake phone number as well. And then we're going to we're going to simply search for Savannah, Georgia on Google Maps to take a look at how to embed it. They usually have an easy option right on here. I don't need that phone number there. So let me see. I'm probably under the share menu here. And here we go. We have the link or the embed map. So I'm going to embed this map. I'm going to copy this. And if I go over here into the WordPress admin to the text section, that's where I can paste in HTML. 
And you'll notice in the text section, you can also make this one paragraph as opposed to splitting each line into multiple paragraphs. So let me do that. We'll paste in the embed. And if we go back to the visual, you'll see the changes that we made. Let's update this page and take a look. So if we reload, there we go. We have our address, phone number, and an embeddable Google map. Last but not least, we have the gallery page. So let's start working on this with the thumbnails and the full size images when you click on it. In order to do this, we're going to use a plugin. And this is something that I might do with code manually, but I want to show you the easier way to do it. So we're going to use a plugin that I've used many times before. And this is called a Responsive Lightbox. So I'm going to go into the plugin section, click Add New, and then search for this responsive light box and you'll see that it has a lot of installs it's got 200,000 plus active installs and a five star rating so we're gonna install it and you'll see how easy it is to do this let's activate the plugin and the one thing you might want to be aware of is sometimes if you're using two plugins for one purpose like for instance I'm using two different image plugins one for a slider and one for this lightbox effect sometimes they do clash with each other and you'll get weird things happening with your site so this is why it's a good idea normally to not use a lot of plugins I like to limit my site to maybe five to ten plugins but with that said I did test this before and and there's no there's no uh, clashes with these two so this should work correctly so I'm going to go into settings here and you'll see we have our responsive lightbox settings. And just like the slider, you can you can uh, choose from different code bases. They have pretty photo, swipe box, fancy box, Nevo lightbox, image lightbox and Toast R Us. To I don't even know what that is or how to pronounce that. I've never used that or seen that before, but I'm going to leave this as is, keep swipe box for the time being, and you'll see here that we have this selector, and it's called light box. And we want to enter this selector where we want to apply this light box effect. And we're going to do that to the link, not to the image itself, but to the link. So the image is going to be a thumbnail image, and it's going to link to the full size image. And this plugin makes it so that instead of getting redirected to a separate page you're just gonna bring the image up within the same window in that light box with the background so I'm just gonna show you how to do this now that this is installed I'm gonna leave all these as is for the time being actually I'm gonna uncheck this one this is gonna add the light box effect to every link by default and I don't want to do that I want to custom customize where I want this light box effect to take effect so I'm gonna uncheck this and we have to add this light box tag to all the links where we want to supply. So let me save the changes. And I'm going to go into the gallery page now. And in here we can add the images. And I tend to do this in the text tab as opposed to the visual tab because you want to see the code because we're going to add this we're going to add this light box selector to the code. So what we want to do is just click the Add Media button. And I'm going to start with the five images that I already have uploaded. Let me see if I could actually do this all at once. I'm going to uh, press Shift here and select multiple images. I'll select all five of them. And for these, I want the alignment to the left. And I want them to link to the media file, which is the full size image. And we're going to put in thumbnail sized images. So we're linking to the full size image but the images going in here are, are thumbnail size. So we're going to insert them into the page and we should see five instances of this code. We do have it but they're not all linked. So it looks like I do have to do this one at a time to link them. So I uploaded the coffee shop one correctly and I'm going to erase these four because they don't have this anchor text or anchor HTML tag so let me delete these and I'll do these one at a time really quickly I'll pause the video and come back to you when I'm done alright we're ready to go here and as you'll see within all of these um, links here 
they give you this rel attribute. It's already within the code. So all we have to do is add lightbox to this. And you can add multiple attributes. So you'll see there's two here, attachment, and they're separated by the space. So anytime you see a space, that's multiple tags here. So we're just going to add in the lightbox selector and make sure that there's a space between the previous one and this one. And I'm just going to copy and paste that space along with the lightbox text to every one of these links here. So you'll see by doing this, you know, it takes 10 seconds really to, to add this. And we should have this lightbox effect taking effect. So let's go back to the gallery page and reload and test it out. And we might have to adjust some padding here because you'll see the first and second row there's uh, alignment issues. But when we click these images, we should get this light box. And there we go. So you can see we have the exit button up here. And right now it doesn't look like we have the gallery effect. I'm pressing the left and right arrow button and it's giving me the shaking effect. But for the time being, this is working properly. So that's how easy it is to add photos to the gallery page. Let me take a look at what's going on here CSS wise and clean that up. Let's open up Chrome Inspector and see how we can fix this. So it looks like the image itself has a margin to the right. And because this is floated to the left, this is the sim a similar problem that we encountered before. When it's floated to the left, the parent container, which is the link element, it doesn't have a height. So it doesn't, it doesn't calculate or account for the height when the element's floated unless this element's floated as well. So, and you'll notice that the offset right here is caused by the paragraph tag, which is automatically inserted by WordPress when you press enter twice. So there's a couple things that we could probably do to fix this. Let me show you first um, how we could probably fix this by simply removing the enter, the uh, enter spaces in here. So let me just delete this, and this is gonna look weird. But if I delete this, what happens is when you press enter once, it, it adds a break. And when you have this extra space here, it breaks it up into HTML paragraphs. So if I bring this all into one line, it'll probably remove all of the text. I'm sorry, all of the paragraph tags, and it'll all be placed in one. So this is a little advanced. You probably don't want to do this, but I just want to show you how WordPress handles paragraph HTML tags. So I'm going to refresh this page. And there you go. You see, this is all contained now within one paragraph tag. And you'll see that if I bring up the inspector. And there you go. We have the single paragraph tag now. It still has the same margin, but it's not offsetting because within this one paragraph tag, we have every image as opposed to every image being within a paragraph tag. So that's a little odd, but you'll also see that in the second row we don't have the space here. So I think what I'm going to do is go back to the way it was so it's easier for you to manage, but at the same time I'm going to adjust with CSS. So let's go back here. To add back in these spaces, I'm just going to hit Control F and search for the slash A, which is the end tag for the anchor and that'll tell me where I can start the new lines. And once we do this, and we have this ready to go, let me update again. We'll start working on the CSS. So let me refresh this page and we should see the error we had before with this padding here. And in order to fix this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna target we need to add CSS code to the paragraph, the anchor tag, and potentially the IMG tag. So I want to do this, but I want to only target this gallery page. So you could do this within WordPress pretty easily by scrolling up to the HTML body section. And with WordPress, you're going to have a page ID for every page. So this gallery page has this unique page ID, which is page ID 13. And we can target this page only with the CSS code by including this tag within the CSS.
So that's exactly what we're going to do. And then the other container element that we normally want to target is the entry content. So the entry content is right here and you'll see that is simply the content on the page that doesn't include the heading or also the your header your sidebar it's only the content on the page so we're gonna target the gallery page only the entry content only and the paragraph the anchor and the IMG tags within that so with that in mind let's go back here and go to appearance editor to go to our child theme style.css and I'm going to mention one other thing here. Within the CSS, you can add these comment tags. It's the slash asterisk and the asterisk slash. That's how you open and close a comment tag. The reason you want to do that is to add notes to your customizations. So if you ever need to edit them in the future, you know where they are, as opposed to sifting through code a month after you've looked at it, which is always difficult to do. So what I'm going to do is break apart this CSS code into different sections. So this is for the header and navigation. So I'm just going to comment it out. And then this comment, anything within the comment isn't processed by the browser when applying the CSS to the design. And then for here, you can see we have our sidebar code. So I'm going to just encapsulate this by the sidebar text. And then we have, we have that down here as well with the clock image. And then I'm going to create a new section here for the gallery page. And then as I said, we're going to target that um, specific page by the class, page ID 13. As I said, we want to also target the entry content, which is a class. So we're going to do dot entry dash content and there's a few things we want to do we want to float all of the parent elements to the image because like I said since they are floated they don't uh, calculate the height but if we float every parent element it will calculate correctly so let me show you that I'm going to apply it to the P to the A and also to the IMG and we're gonna apply just float left so let's take a look at that and see see where we're at when we add that CSS code I'm gonna refresh this and it looks like it looks like we're fixed I think we're fixed here it's aligned correctly let me right click and take a look at this code and you'll see now when we hover over the image we have the correct saw or the correct uh, width and height taking shape and the same thing now with the anchor tag the IMG includes a margin to the right and now you can see that the anchor tag encapsulates both that width and the height and the same thing with the P tag and now for every P tag the margin is applied correctly to the bottom so that is how we correct it with CSS. Now it takes a little bit of time to become this comfortable with CSS, but once you once you do, you can see how easy it is to correct these small fixes. So now we have every single piece in place. I'm just going to upload the other five images here that I had within the gallery. I'll go back to the pages gallery page here and upload the other five images. So I'm going to go through one of them and then I'll pause the video until I'm done with all five. And I'll start with this camping coffee one. And we have the same settings left, link to the media file and thumbnail size. And there's our six photo. So I'm going to go ahead and do this for the others until we get to 10. And I'll come back at you. All right, here we go. We have all 10 images, so I'm going to update the page and we'll take a look. And there we have it. We got all 10 images on the page. So we have completed every single page here. We are about 90% done. I'm just going to quickly update these footer widget sections. Right now, since I don't have any 
you know more information I'm just going to use generic information but you could add whatever you want here specific to your business or you could even use uh, like Facebook or Twitter widgets to put those down here but let me take care of that and then once we finish off the design here I'm just going to do a quick once over to check for responsiveness to make sure that the site looks good on mobile let's go back into the WordPress admin to make these changes Oh, and I, I, I just remembered I didn't put this lightbox code into these last five images I uploaded so let me go ahead and do that make sure you don't forget that otherwise it won't appear in the new box it will go to a new page so just add that to the rel attribute and we're good to go update that page so now we're gonna move on to the bottom widgets they are controlled in the appearance widgets section and you'll see this is the sidebar and we have a left hand sidebar which isn't displayed right now you could add widgets to the header which we don't have at the moment and then here are the footer widgets one two three and they actually have five of them but we're only using three at the moment what I'm gonna add into these widgets are a featured coffee section I'm gonna put the location section where it includes the full address and the phone number and the third section I'm just gonna leave blank I'm gonna fill it in but again you can use that for whatever you like if you want to link up Instagram Twitter there's several other features you could select this really is gonna depend on the business but let's get started so the first one we're gonna do is the featured coffee we're gonna do this using the text or HTML widget and we'll put the title here featured coffee we're gonna have an image in here and then we'll do text so using HTML we do IMG we have to put the source of the image SRC we have the alt tag and we're gonna end that tag and to get our source image all we have to do is go into the media section and I'm gonna open this in a new tab tab and I'll grab the image URL for one of these images so I'll use the coffee beans image for the featured coffee right now I'm gonna try using the full size image and we'll see if that needs to be adjusted this image is a thousand pixels wide but I believe it's going to respond to the width of the widget area so I'll go back here add this in to the SRC section and then for alt tag I'm just gonna put featured coffee now you would probably put the name of the featured coffee for SEO purposes and then I'm also gonna type in a new paragraph here and it looks like if I don't check this off it's gonna automatically add in the paragraph tags as I said when you press enter twice here but I actually wanna do this manually just to make sure that I control every element of HTML in here so the paragraph tag is really easy it's just a P so I'm going to type out the skeleton code for that and let me go back to this lorem ipsum copy and paste this text we'll put a random text on here for the time being so I don't have to write it out and let's save this take a look I'll exit out of that media page for the time being and there we go we have a featured coffee section now so for the second widget here I'm going to do the location so for this I could also do a Google Maps widget let me go back to the contact page and copy that code for the Google Maps widget so I'm going to go ahead and copy that. I can exit right out of this page, go back to the widget section. And for footer widget 2, we're going to do the same thing, a text widget. Put our location. And I'm going to paste in the code for the Google map. And I'm also going to paste in the address that I have. Once again, this is a fake address. For this one, we're going to use the automatically add paragraphs feature and we'll save it and take a look at that and it looks like we we probably want to add this map to the top here 
and also want to adjust the height of it so I'll show you how we can easily fix that really quickly let me copy and paste this and delete those extra spaces add it to the bottom and right here you can see that we have the width and the height so I'm going to change the height to 200 pixels and see if that adjusts it this is responsive so I may need to make further changes but this is how I like to do things just quickly make a change take a look at it and see what needs to be fixed and that's pretty good actually that's pretty similar to the size of the picture so I'm gonna leave this as is and then for the third widget I'm just gonna fill it with a few of these other options to show you how they look so instead of using the text widget let me try a, f a few others. I mean, if you have an active blog, or for instance, right now we have the blog linked to the events page. So to show your most recent events, you might want to do this recent post widget. So I'll drag it over here. I'll type out the title, recent events, and you could show up to five, but for right now, I'm just going to do two. And let me save that and see what it looks like. And this is pretty simple. This is definitely uh, a standard layout. They don't show you any of the snippet. They just show you the actual headline of the blog or article. So these are the things that you can begin to customize if you'd like to. But you could also just make sure that your headlines are very descriptive if you'd like to do that. And you could also do recent comments looks like we can add the meta slider as well so let me delete this uh, recent post widget and see what the meta slider looks like on here let me save that and refresh and look you can even add the image slider if you'd like down here now the arrows are a little messed up because the sizing but I mean you could see how the widgets give you the flexibility to edit the site and update it on the fly so I'm going to go back to the recent post widget, leave that there in place. Uh, where was it here? Recent posts. And I'll title it recent events again. We'll leave that there as our third widget. And the final thing we're going to do is update this footer area. Right now, the footer has the generate press link and the link to WordPress and we might want to update that with the business name or something so I'll show you how we can do that because this is not usually as easy to do within the WordPress admin area first let me see if I could do it from the customize section normally you can't but this all depends on the theme so if I go through these let me see with the layout now there's nothing on here to update it colors typography menus blog now, so it doesn't look like we have the ability to edit on here. So I'll show you how you could do this with the theme files. There's a file called footer.php which generates your footer. And because we created the child theme, we don't have that PHP file in our child theme. So what we need to do is copy and paste it from our parent theme to our child theme. And we could make the edits there. That way if the parent theme is updated, similar to the style.css, we won't overwrite those changes. So I'm going to do this within FileZilla. I'll open that up. Right now we're connected to our web server. So let me go into the parent theme, which is GeneratePress. We should see that we have a footer.php file. And what I'm going to do is go into my child theme here on my desktop on the left-hand side and drag and drop that footer.php file. Then I'm going to edit it on the desktop and re-upload it to the child theme folder so it, so that footer.php file is used instead of the parent theme footer.php. On the web server side, I'm going to go back into the child theme and let me edit footer.php on my computer here and I'll re-upload it. Now we have footer.php open and you should see that there's a lot of code here but the text should be relatively simple where it's generated and I can see it right down here all this is PHP code which we're really not even worrying about and then down here we have the actual HTML footer code and you'll see that the credits are generated right here 
So this, all the credits that you see on that page are actually generated by this PHP line. So if I comment this out, just so we don't lose that, I'll comment that out, and then we can add our own HTML code right here. So let me go back to the page, and I'll copy and paste what's on there now and edit that. So I'm just going to replace the Generate Press and WordPress uh, text with our company name, our business name. So let me paste that in. I'm going to paste in the text, leave it copyright 2016, and we can do Earth Grounds Coffee in Savannah, Georgia. So this is also good for SEO. If you put your state name or location or service area in as many places as possible. So with this footer.php saved, let's re-upload it to our web server under the child theme folder and see if our changes take effect. So there it is. It's now on our web server. We'll go back to our web page, load this, and it should use that footer.php. There we go. There you can see our changes. So you can really build out the entire footer if you want to make a, a more elaborate footer. But for this instance, I just wanted to show you how to change the text on it. So we're completely done this website. You can customize it however you'd like. Let me just do one quick little check of the responsiveness. So I have this resizer tool here. I'll click it and it'll allow us to resize the page so we can test for tablet sizes and phone size. Right here we have an iPhone sized look and as you'll see the logo stays about the same size but the menu now becomes a mobile navigation menu and that's pretty cool. So we have the menu mobile, mobile optimized. Right now the gallery, those images are now in one big column instead of multiple rows and that looks good. The sidebar now comes under the content instead of being on the side. So all of these areas are really looking good on mobile. If I wanted to, I could make some adjust adjustments. For instance, I could make these images span the full width of the content area on mobile. But right now, I mean, I think this looks good enough. Let me go to a few other pages and see what they look like. So, I mean, this is pretty standard here. I'll go to the contact page. We have that information. We have the Google map on there twice. So everything is looking good here. We are completely done this website. And like I said, I might make more changes and do a little bit more customization if this was a real client, but I mean, this is 90% or 95% of a completed business website using a free theme. Now, if you like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I put a lot of time into building this and editing the screencast. And I also build websites for local clients. I mean, that's part of my business, and I work from home. So if you're interested in learning more about WordPress, web design, or making money from your skills building websites, be sure to visit my website, websiteprofitcourse.com, and you'll find a lot more there to help you out. Thanks a lot, guys and girls. Keep on learning. Keep on getting better.